So how shall we nurture leadership in a world of hyperconnection? I say we, we need to form hyperconnected leaders, global citizens who will connect cultures, stewards who will connect people to nature, leaders who connect the excluded, the margins to the center. Our chairman, Father Jose Ramon Pierin, always mesmerizes us with his opening messages, with his lectures, and with, with his opening prayers. <laughs> Father Jeff, mesmerize us now. Oh, no. <laughs> you, Nene uh, ascribes too many powers to me. I... <laughs> Thank you and good morning to everyone. Let me just share my screen. Is this uh, is this clear now? Can can people yes. see the? We can see Thank it. You. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this this forum, this gathering, on on how we can nurture or sustain leadership and social responsibility among the young. I always start with this, uh, well, not always, but I like to start with that question. I think it is a question that should haunt every educator. How do you make good people out of educated people? Because it does not follow that. Uh, that just because you educate a person, that that person will become a good person, whatever good means. And so this is the question I pose to myself uh, and to others and perhaps to us this morning as well. How do you make good people out of educated people? When I uh, talk about uh, leadership or social responsibility. Uh, I, I like to go back to this experience with our medical students. Now, these are students who will become doctors someday. Some of them, well, not all, but most. Uh, some will go into public health and other fields. They, this, I think they were in second year. Uh, I forget now, a couple of years ago. <laughs> But uh, they, they, aside from their heavy academic load, they, they produced a movie, a two hour film uh, on this well, titled Mga Kwentong Tsubibo. It means uh, stories of the merry-go-round, uh, st stories of the Ferris wheel. Tsubibo is anything that goes around and around. And I was very much pleasantly surprised because the film, well, I said, how can, you know, do doctors know how to make films? Some of them were in the film, but it was a film that talked about not just medicine, it talked about poverty, it talked about organ transplant and the desperation of people, how they are forced to, to sell their, for instance, their kidneys. And of course, all, all of this is underground. Uh, this is illegal. They, they talked about these issues and how things are systemic and how we just, things just keep coming back. And at the end of the film, I congratulated them. I said, I'm so proud of you because I know you will be more than just doctors. Um, and in, yes, indeed, uh, they will be more than just clinicians. Uh, the, where, I, where I work, it's a school that starts with the young, young ones all the way to the professionals. So we start them early at about six, five, six years old until they perhaps uh, graduate from us when they are in their 20s. Uh, and in and any school, well, this is just, I just wanted to um, preface 
this whole talk by saying, first of all, I am a Jesuit. Uh, and so this is my perspective. Uh, we have been in education for about 500 years now. And we've educated not just Catholics or Christians. No, we've educated Muslims, Buddhists, even non-believers. Uh, we've been responsible, in a way, for even dictators and all sorts of leaders. This is always what we bear in mind, that we want to form the whole person and the whole person for others. An expression that means we try to tell people that their happiness ultimately is tied to the happiness of others, trying to make others happy in the oblation of life that they, they make for others. And the second is that, yes, that they, they are here in this world, not just for themselves, but to serve the common good. Now, every school, any school will, of course, say that that is also what they are about. Uh, in a Jesuit school, we just say, yes, any school will do that. In our, in our schools, we just say it is shaped by a particular inspiration. So what are the challenges these days? Now, leaders, leaders are supposed to preside over realities that are bigger than themselves. Uh, and so I think the, the task and the mission of education, especially today, is, is to connect our students to all sorts of worlds. I call them worlds. First is the world of learning. The second is the world of tools, tools and technology. And third is the world of cultures uh, with a S, with, a, with an S, um, because there are many cultures. Connect them also to the world of nature and to the world of the poor and the world of interiority. I shall explain this briefly um, as we go along. These are the challenges that leaders, and not just leaders, but individuals, all of us, we face these days. First, we are in a world that is more connected. Yes, but we are also more divided. We are divided now more than ever. In spite of the daily 24-7 hyperconnection that we experience, we know some of the reasons already. There is a lot of information and data out there, and yet we seem to know less now. The change is disruptive, the speed of the change, not just in technology, but also in the human psyche and even in our in our social organization and economies. You've heard of the gig economy. And one last challenge really is, is this, uh, the challenge of the environment. Um, I think among young people, there is angst, there is anxiety um, because they feel that they're in, what they're inheriting from us is, is a world in peril. So the future is not clear. And they hear about climate change and disasters, and, and so they worry. So how shall we nurture leadership? How do we do this in a world of hyperconnection? I say we, we need to form hyperconnected leaders. And what do I mean? Learners who are connected inside themselves Okay, who, who, who struggle with the fragmentation inside of them and who try to connect all these things within themselves who, and connect to learn from these creators who connect technology to people well, global citizens who will connect cultures and the many ways that peoples uh, do the same thing. Stewards who will connect people to nature, leaders who connect the excluded, the margins to the, to the center. And then, well, for those of uh, men and women of faith, well, shepherds who connect people interiorly to themselves, but also to our God. 
So the first part is really just if we can if we can foster this love of learning. When when I think when when we when we try to educate these young minds, we we tell them that you are not just a mind. Uh, you are not just what you think. So we expose them to all sorts of worlds. And I, I think this, this is crucial. It's the whole person that we are trying to form here, not just the intellect. So we look at psychology. We look at even athletics, physical formation. Uh, we look at ethics, uh, conscience. We, we look at all these other realms in the person. I like to, and uh, Nene knows this quote already, I, I, I like to share this quote from Eric Hoffer, uh, an American uh, uh, philosopher, back in the 1970s. His point is that those who will inherit the future are not the learned, but those who are always learning. And so uh, I believe that you, know, you, you first form leaders by teaching them to love learning. In the previous slide, uh, I mentioned liberal arts also, uh, because that we feel is crucial. And so our students are exposed to, to the classics, uh, to, to theater, uh, to arts. And yeah. even, if you are, even if you are a science, Sinap ko kay Claire. Oops, sorry. sorry about that. Uh, you may continue. I've mute. I've muted the person already. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is something that I know is easier said than done, because we in school we always try to put things in learned packages that these are outcomes that are needed. But we believe that, especially in this fast-paced world, the capacity for <clears throat> learning uh, is important, especially because you don't know really what's going to happen. We, we also try to foster creators who can navigate this world of technology. And not just technology, but technology and people. Uh, You've heard of Internet of Things, uh, where they connect all sorts of data from our devices to people. Well, the Internet of Things is possible because of the Internet of People. And so we tell them, that, look, yes, technological progress might be there, but social progress does not necessarily follow from technological progress. And we have seen this, how people, in fact, regress even if they have all sorts of technology at their disposal. Citizens who connect cultures, especially now that we seem to be fracturing as a, as a, as a globe uh, with the Ukraine and Russia war. And so I think more than ever, we, we try to connect people if we can give them experiences of cultures, uh, people who believe differently, or who do not believe at all, or people who, well, by culture, I just say the many different ways that we do the same thing, you know, language, cuisine, <laughs> etc. So try to foster this appreciation for this diversity of, of, of humanity. And that means communication, language, so important, uh, and it's not just words, as we know. So we, we try to sharpen that skill of listening and, and of articulating and being also cautious, being careful about our words uh, and silences too. We try to expose them to nature. You know, we, we have... I think if we have these uh, extracurricular, we call them extracurricular, as if they're outside the curriculum, right? Extracurricular activities. Well, 
we try our best to relate what is extra to what is intra, what is in the classroom also. But an appreciation of culture, an exposure or immersion in in the beauty and in also in, in the vulnerability and and sensitivity of nature is important. So <clears throat> try our we try um, to connect them and to to Im to impress upon them that we can destroy this garden, but we have we have also the power to take care of, of this garden. We also uh, provide opportunities. We hope we can provide opportunity for students to enter the world of the poor. Many of our students come from privileged families. About a fifth are from poor families because they are scholars, but the majority, about 80%, really come from well-to-do families. And we tell them, is your goal in life to make yourself richer? Um, and so we systematically, throughout their formation, uh, while they are with us, we try to give them these experiences that make them question, even God, they make them question about why, why there are poor people, why, uh, and other questions that disturb them and hopefully lead them to a conviction of who they are. We also, well, disasters will be a, um, I think disasters will be there, a continuing challenge for us, and disasters will continue to isolate people. And so we try to, to uh, expose them as well to this reality of environmental risk uh, and isolation. Lastly, um, and here, it, you need not be a person of faith, really, or, or a religious person, but it's just to develop the habit of of interior, of interior stillness and silence. Uh, and so even simple habits like praying before and after class or certain rituals uh, in school, uh, silence, uh, meditation. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we tell them also, there are occasions when we have a program called Unplugged. Uh, so, you know, we let go of the wires and the technology and so that they can be comfortable with, with solitude or even with talking, you know, face to face with themselves, with, with each other. So uh, this is our strategy, really. You have these verticals. Um, it's a matrix sort of a format here, but you have these academic disciplines, these courses, these subjects, math, English, uh, Filipino history, but running across them are these these uh, I would just say um, not skill sets or leadership competencies that we try to foster. So, for instance, if you are a teacher of math, you, know, you you can choose the kinds of problems, the kinds of equations that can perhaps touch on some of these topics like, like technology or, or even poverty. Um, so let me just end by um, uh, saying that I, I began by saying it does not follow that just because you're educated that you can become good, but it does happen, it does happen. But that educated people can become good people. And when that happens, I think that joy is priceless, the joy that makes us want to jump corridors. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Father Jet. Well, that was really something. Again, you nurtured our spirits and our soul and uh, challenge us to be hyper-connected leaders.